this part will be cut out, of course, and I'll take it. We'll do it. I like this part. This is I, the best part. I know. <laughs> this is the real part. This is the real part. And we'll get some of that, too, because I, I want to ask you the questions, but we'll go off whatever you say. I'm, so, I'm good. I'm ready. Okay. All right. So, hey, everybody. It's Cheryl Lawson from Social Media Tulsa, and I'm so excited to have on the Skype phone with me today, Miss Becky McRae. Uh, hello. Hey, everybody. Say hello to Becky McRae, who just so happens to be our keynote speaker for Social Media Tulsa Conference. But Becky is so much more than, than that. From uh, We met via Twitter, and, <laughs> and this is actually our first face-to-face -face meeting. It is. the call of that. Is. <laughs> so I just wanted to... You know, talk a little bit about social media. There are so many, uh, you know, ideas and thoughts and things going about today and, and, and in recent weeks about social media. What is social media to you? To me, I don't have a, a business-like definition of social media. I have a, a personal definition of social media. It's all the ways that we share media that we create. It's all the things that we create and share with each other. Whether those are comments about our lives, there are photos, there are videos, there are stories that we tell each other. It's ways that we connect our network and that just who you're connected with tells some of the story about who you are. So it's all those ways that we are networked and we blog and we are connected together and it's that media that we create and share online with each other. Right. I think some people get caught up in the media part of social media and not so much of the social part. And, I, right. you know, if it, if, if it could be called Social Tulsa, I would be just as happy at, to do the same thing. But, uh, you know, I do see that as, you know, telling stories. Everybody has a story to tell. Yes. It, it's definitely about our stories, and it's definitely, if you look at the media that anyone puts out, whether that are is their links or their comments or anything that they're sharing, that tells you something of the story of that person. I know quite a bit about you because I follow you on Twitter. And and really that's the only place I follow you. I think we may be on Facebook together, but I know a little of your story through the small ways that we're connected. Right. The more ways we connect, the more of your story I get to know. Right. And that's how it works. It's just about people who are connecting in different ways. It's like if I if I saw you every day in Alva, downtown at the coffee shop. It, I would know a little of your story from seeing you at the coffee shop. Absolutely. And now you see my face every day in your Twitter streams. <laughs> and so and then if I got to, you know, if we joined the same social group, we were both in the same, if we were both in the business and professional women, or we were both in the Chamber of Commerce, I'd get to know a little more of your story that way. And then if we both go to the same church or we shop in the same businesses, we're going to get to know each other's story a little better. And it's the same thing online. If you're in the same networks online, you'll get to know a little bit more about people's stories. It's just about how you connect. Right. I like to tell people the most of the conversations I have with people on Twitter and some on Facebook is about when we're going to see each other again. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah, you know. So some of the confusion is just about you know we're always on the computer, but those connections get people to those face-to-face -face meetings and. The, the, to further the relationship and the connection with people behind the tweets and posts and, and links. You know, when I was leaving, the, uh, leaving here, I'm going to go haul hay. I, we need to get some more hay for our cattle. We've had so much snow, we've used up most of our hay. So when I leave here, we're going to go haul hay. When you leave here, you're going to go somewhere else and you have other things to do. But I'm telling you, first of all, we're not all on the computer online all the time. Right. And the other thing is we all have different lives and we all are doing different things. And this is a way of connecting. You and I, other than this, really don't have a lot of ways of connecting. Exactly. And so this is a tool that enables people with completely different lives and different perspectives and and different ideas to come together and share all that and be the richer for having shared it. Absolutely. You know, I like to say global is the new local. And, yeah. you know, just I that. Long. I'm that long. Long more times than you know. And you're welcome to use it any time. Because I think while some of the recent technologies have 
brought us internal and inside more. Mm-hmm. His technology, if you will, has connected us more from you know from a local global statement beyond what anybody had imagined before that we could do. I mean, I've never been to Alba, but you know what? I'm kind of intrigued and interested. In what's going <laughs> I'm not on? The there? only one. <laughs> <laughs> the to come see me at the liquor store and and you know have come to see my cattle and but. The other thing is we're also seeing that it's becoming more mobile. So, you know, we have more people carrying around smartphones who are making those kind of connections now wherever they go. And, you know, you'll probably see a picture of me this afternoon loading bales because that's the way that I do things. You know, I share that from wherever I am. I think we're coming to a point, you know, we, we came to a point with social media where it was mostly done inside to make those connections. And we're coming back to a point where it's mostly done out and about in the world. So I think that's a good development, too. Absolutely. Well, I really appreciate the story of the rescued calf that you oh, shared yeah. over the holidays and through the snow apocalypse. And I, you know, I didn't look at the first photo because you said in your tweet it was graphic. I did. <laughs> so I didn't awesome. look. But as you... And it was not for the squeamish, and it was not for the squeamish. And I, we had a baby calf attacked by coyotes. Oh. And... His little nose was torn up, and he he had injuries, and but he has survived, and he is doing very well, and he has more fans than I do, and <laughs> he's, a, he's a popular, healthy little guy. But how else would you have had a chance to share in that story? Exactly, and and but you I know, like written you a letter and sent you pictures, dear Cheryl. Let me tell you about my baby calf. <laughs> One, there's no way I would have known that I would have been interested in a story like that, but. For sure, you know, you told a compelling story about rescuing uh, this calf, and I was really interested in it. One, because I'm interested in what you do, because uh, I care, right? That's the kind of step one, is you do have to care about the people in your network and in your yes. social graph, using that term. But it, it really is interesting that, you know, that's not something that anybody, I'm sure, that follows that story now thought that they'd be interested in. You know, and... Scott Townsend from Bartlesville named him Bubby. Ah. That's what Bubby's doing. So then we then now we call him Bubbles, and he has a name. There are people following that story in Indiana, Oklahoma, um, uh, Massachusetts, and um, I know one person who's really keeping an eye on it from uh, the uh, UAE. Wonderful. So I mean, it's just one of those things that. Um, if you know the person involved, and then you hear this story about what's going on in their lives, then it makes a difference to you. Um, the people that are running the Ag Chat Foundation are trying to encourage more farmers and ag-related people to share their stories, because so few people have a connection to a farm anymore, but a lot of our parents did or our grandparents did, and so we have kind of, you know, a minor connection to a farm, or we, we know folks that that had agriculture in their background. And we're all interested in that kind of thing. And even if you didn't think you were interested in the baby calf, when you were in the story, it's interesting. I'm going to be Okay, no problem. <laughs> well, we can edit it a little bit. <laughs> but it's, it's good. Hey, this is, it's live and, and, and it's happening now. And that's really another beauty of these connections and social networking is that it's happening real time. You know, our connection is happening real time. It'll be recorded for people to see later. But, you know, this is a great interaction. You know, we talked before we started the interview and we're sure we'll talk after a little bit. But um, talk about the importance I think from a small business. I know we've talked about personally. Talk about a small business and why it's important to to be, to have a presence and connect with people. 